I'm Jason Epperson, this is RV Miles, and it's time for this week's RV and Camping News Roundup. First up, the Federal Trade Commission has finalized the Combating Auto Retail Scams Rule, or the CARS Rule, in order to combat two types of common illegal tactics consumers face when buying a car, bait and switch tactics and hidden junk fees. Have you ever seen a car that's available online and you get to the dealership and it's not there? This is going to help with part of that. The CARS rule will take effect on July 30th, 2024, and it prohibits car dealers from making misrepresentations about a wide variety of material information that could impact a consumer's purchasing decision, such as vehicle costs, discounts available, product add-ons, and whether consumer reviews are unbiased. The CARS rule will also define when dealers must clearly and conspicuously disclose the offering price of the car. The rule requires certain price-related disclosures when promoting a financing or lease transaction and requires dealers to clearly and conspicuously disclose when add-ons are not required, and they do define what clearly and conspicuously means. The CARS rule prohibits dealers from charging consumers for add-ons that don't provide any benefit or charging consumers for any item without obtaining the consumer's express informed consent. But guess what? The new rule exempts RV dealers from the law. The RV Dealers Association argued successfully to the FTC saying the rule would negatively impact RV consumers due to additional equipment sold by RV dealers like towing systems and leveling devices that can be essential for the safe operation of the RV. The FTC did comment that the agency would continue to monitor RV dealers for unfair and deceptive practices to determine whether further action in the future is warranted to protect consumers through law enforcement, future rulemaking, or other measures. The U.S. Department of Transportation has announced $817 million from the bipartisan infrastructure law for 385 Safe Street and Roads for All grants, the SS4A program. Grants go directly to regional, local, and tribal communities for implementation, planning, and demonstration projects driven at the local level to improve safety and help prevent deaths and serious injuries on the nation's roadways. The funds will help tackle what the White House calls a preventable crisis of deaths on the nation's roads. The program is part of the more than $14 billion in the infrastructure law dedicated to roadway safety. Some examples of projects include $25 million to improve safety and bus stop accessibility at 56 high crash intersections in Detroit. Webster County, Iowa was awarded $8.5 million to improve 32 and a half miles of rural county roads that have been identified as high risk locations for crashes and fatalities. The city of Billings, Montana got $3.5 million to implement safety countermeasures at 11 intersections and six corridors including high-visibility crosswalks, improved lighting and signing, sidewalks and shared-use paths, and more. Campground chain KOA has released its first comprehensive research report focused on the state of camping and outdoor enjoyment viewed through the lens of accessibility. Inclusive of physical, cognitive, and socioeconomic factors, accessibility in the outdoors continues to be an industry-wide challenge that KOA endeavors to unravel, starting with this report. Around 1 billion individuals, approximately 15% of the global population, live with one or more disabling conditions. The report dives into incidents, behavior, and barriers those with limitations impacting their camping experience face. The study found that 48% of accessibility-challenged campers say that camping is a more accessible travel experience than other outdoor activities or leisure travel, but KOA says there's still much more to be done to turn this knowledge into tangible progress to bring the outdoors to everyone. The most prevalent and critical barriers revolve around essential infrastructure like bathrooms and level and smooth pathways. In an article in Motor Trend, GM has reaffirmed its commitment to removing Apple CarPlay and Android Auto from its vehicles. GM made the announcement earlier this year with little info as to why, but now they're saying it comes down to safety. GM says CarPlay and Android Auto have stability issues that cause drivers to pick up their phones again, taking their eyes off the road. They believe that if drivers were to do everything through the vehicle's built-in systems, they'd be less likely to pick up their phones and therefore less distracted and safer behind the wheel. 
Of course, GM hasn't tested this theory in the lab or in the real world yet, but GM is making software like Google Maps available in their Altify infotainment software, along with popular apps like Spotify and Audible. JD Power data shows issues with CarPlay and Android Auto are common owner complaints, and that customers tend to blame the automaker rather than the phone manufacturer or phone software. Eliminating CarPlay and Android Auto potentially relieves GM of a key customer complaint, dragging down their perceived quality scores. And of course, automakers have to pay Google and Apple for access to their software. And there's plenty of disagreement over ownership of that data generated by the vehicle. Enormous amounts of data are being collected on how you drive and where you go. Motor Trend says that data is valuable to the automakers and tech companies, both for consumer research as well as to be packaged and sold to third parties. Motor Trend also says that in addition to potentially buying things from GM or GM's partners through the car's infotainment system, GM is also looking at subscription services that would be managed through the same interface. So it's about money. Automakers see subscriptions as a huge new resource to be tapped, with GM hoping to make as much as $25 billion on subscriptions by 2030. A new reality renovation TV show will be set in an RV resort in Robert, Louisiana. Real estate developer Servio Capital has acquired the Tangy Pines family campground in what they're calling a $34 million development featuring 417 RV sites and 77 cabins. Every aspect of the RV park is set to undergo a comprehensive renovation project includes paving all the RV sites and adding a zip line, bike paths, a lazy river, poolside bar and grill, ropes course, mini bowling, and an inflatable playground. Servio is producing a five-season reality TV show series called Cabin Wars, Flip It to Win It. The show will surround the renovations of cabins in the newly acquired park. Contestants on the show will undertake the challenge of modernizing the outdated cabins with a $20,000 budget to craft chic glamping spaces. They have 30 days to do it, and the grand prize is $40,000. Filming begins on January 8th, and it will be available on Amazon Prime this spring. What's going on with Camping World's marketing these days? Camping World, with over 200 dealerships, is the nation's largest dealership chain, and they've done some head-scratching things, at least in my mind lately. First, over the past few years, Camping World's GS Media and Events, which used to produce a lot of RV shows around the country, is seemingly down to producing none. As we approach the RV show season, an article on Camping World's website lists only seven shows in which they will participate with other dealers. Camping World dealerships have been pulling out of RV shows in order to focus on their own ultimate RV show, which is sort of a hybrid of online and in-person events happening in January and February. There are a handful of ultimate RV shows at big convention centers around the U.S. scheduled for next year. But sometimes Camping World advertises events and even their own dealers don't know what the heck is going on. In November, Camping World dealerships across the nation advertised their Fall RV Festival on social media. And we had reports at many locations of people showing up to dealerships for this event, only to find nobody on staff knew what it was. Camping World is also holding its first online auction now through this Saturday, December 16th, with over 100 used RVs and starting bids at just $1. I don't know if I'd ever buy a used RV online, but if you're around Craft Auction Service in Richmond, Indiana, you can attend the actual auction on Saturday in person, which will also be streamed online. There are lots of pre-bids in place already for a lot of these RVs. I also received this curious marketing email from Camping World Chairman and CEO Marcus Lemonis yesterday. It reads, I just lowered RV prices by more than $17 million. We need to clear out this inventory before the end of the year. Get the most value for your money with these end of year liquidation discounts. Camping World has about $1.7 billion worth of inventory across its dealerships, according to their latest quarterly report, which would mean $17 million represents about a 1% price cut across the board. Of course, only certain units have discounts, so perhaps that 17 million reflects maybe hundreds in savings on certain rigs, maybe thousands. But this is always the modus operandi of Camping World, and frankly, some other dealership chains advertise the lowest price to get you in the door and then get the customer to pay thousands of dollars in prep fees and extended warranties. You can look right in Camping World's financial reports and see how much they make off this stuff. Their current profit margin on Good Sam services, that's roadside assistance and extended warranties, is 80%, and that's up from 63% that it was the same quarter last year. Their profit margin on a new RV is only 15%, so those add-ons are really a big deal. 
Camping World pulls in about $200 million a year on Good Sam services alone. Wish they were subject to that cars rule. All right, enough about Camping World. Speaking of RV shows, Abby and I will be at the Florida RV Super Show in Tampa January 17th, along with Camping World. We'll be there on the 18th as well, and we're leaving after that, but it continues through the 21st. We'll also be at the Kansas City RV Show January 25th through the 28th, and the Seattle RV Show February 15th through the 18th. In Kansas City and Seattle, we'll be doing seminars and recording both of these news videos and the RV Miles podcast on site, which you can find on any podcast app or on its own YouTube channel right here. Thanks everybody for being here. We'll see you next time.